another friend of mine um, who has many, many talents. Um, she's an actress, she's a writer, she's a performer, she's a poet. Um, please welcome my good friend um, Frankie Cap. Sorry, Cal. Before I start my act tonight, I'm going to say a few words, if I may. Yeah. I'm still well within the time slot. I will be. <laughs> my nephew, Michael Calvert, rang me today with some tragic news. He is a musician who does gigs very like the one we're all doing now. Two nights ago, at a gig, his fellow musician, Paul Senior, suddenly collapsed on the stage and his life couldn't be saved. It's absolutely tragic, most especially for his wife and children, of course. He did die doing something he loved in fantastic, like-minded company. So, all us giggers tonight, we now know when our number's up. That in itself is an old music hall term, I believe, which is interesting. And I salute you all and all your different journeys in, let's face it, this strange life. <laughs> I would like to dedicate my little act this evening to two people to Rachel and her journey and to the late Paul Senior musician and his journey. and my suitcase, who's called Justin. <laughs> just in case. I oh know, I know, oh no, it's a living. I like to say Justin. <laughs> what else have we got in here? We have uppercase and lowercase. Oh. <laughs> you see what I did there? It's a living. And... Shell case, but not in this case, meaning a bullet, but a seashell. I am doing quite a lot Have you ever thought that one of these is such a curiosity, so elegantly pinnacled and curved, and yet you can be strangely unnerved that it houses a miniature monstrosity? This shell has a faintish blue-black tinge as if a writer on the fringe of the shore has slithered through intriguing purple seaweed or Ford handed a need to score by finding the perfect seagull feather, not yet battered by brine or elemental weather, to turn into a quill and fill its tip with ink laid on by an obliging squid. That's what they did to get this inky marbling on this shell you can hear the sea in it as well. Once its weird inhabitant has gone, that sludgy little beast so grey and wan, it's quite a strange thing to muse upon that this spiralling shell, elegant as hell, could be part of a miniature Brighton pavilion. <laughs> but the creature that lived in it had a slimy opinion of life as it lived it, it never went out. It never met a mermaid, a dolphin, or a trout. It never viewed its own house from the wild outside, or knew it was part of the famous British seaside. But let's not be snobbish, and let's not be hasty. The beastie that lived here was incredibly tasty. <laughs> Justin, that's a bit embarrassing, eating props. What else have you got? I think there's something in here. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, Justin, how could you? There now appears to be an 
elephant in the room. <laughs> How embarrassing. You all know what to do, or rather what not to do. Don't look at it. Don't mention it. I can talk about the weather. I can do it in rhyme if you like. After all, this is a poetry evening. Not that all poetry has to rhyme, of course. <laughs> a massive blue-grey storm cloud is growing in the east. Is that the east? It's rising like yeast when you're making bread. Or does it look more like an approaching beast? Could it be an elephant instead? Oh God, I said it. Um, um, no, uh, quick, uh, more weather, more weather. Um, rain, rain, rain. And, uh, it, it, it's raining so hard that the raindrops are almost in chunks. It's as if a herd of elephants were squirting water through their trunks. No, oh, God, I'm not um, uh, Maybe I could sing instead. Oh! Nelly the elephant packed her. Oh no, can't do that. Um, uh, uh, perhaps I could busk. As we glide through the amber daylight into the pearly dusk. You know, there's an incandescent glow from that elephant's tusk. Oh God, did it get what? It's no good. We have to face it. Brace yourselves. Face and brace. You saw your best friend snogging a man who wasn't her husband. That's the elephant in the room. Another friend claims to be starring in a West End musical and you find out it's a pop band. That's the <laughs> elephant in the room. Your grandmother's having an affair. That's why she's dyed her hair. That's the elephant in the room. Your uncle saw a man about a corgi but was really at a palace orgy. That's the elephant in the room. Your sister's a government analyst, but you know she's growing cannabis. That's the elephant in the room. Amy and Ben are getting married, and they both want to wear a dress, but they're fighting over the same one and crumbling with the stress. Neither wants to wear white. They're going for ivory. Rivalry over ivory. That's the elephant in the room. Ironically, you know, ivory, the tusk. <laughs> we'll gloss over the <coughs> elephant not actually having any tusks. Must be a baby. We can do this no more. Someone, in a moment, please open the door. I know you're not the whole free herd but you are still an individual E-word. And I hope you're understanding that an elephant on the landing is not the same prophet of doom as an elephant in the room. The audience needs are greater. I'll pick you up later. <laughs> oh, no elephant in the room. Or is it? It's a very strange thing, but I, I'm suddenly suffused with gloom. It's as if someone's just swept through here with a big utility broom. I don't know what to do without the elephant in the room. Gotta get it back, Justin. Gotta get it back. Goodbye from the double act, worst case scenario. That was a short act or a brief case. <laughs>